Hi everyone! Thank you for checking out my video this week. Now today's topic is something that is just a little, a little dark, a little sad, a little overwhelming. Ugh, makes us just feel worn out. And I, the reason that I want to address this is because more than any other question or any other comment that I get, I get the comment or question, Katie, help me. I'm at the end of my rope. I just want to die. No one will care if I die. My husband, boyfriend, friends, family, nobody cares. I'm in a dark place. I've been battling and I've lost. I'm a failure. All sorts of things. I get those questions all the time, every day, all day. And... I feel that because it's such an issue, if I'm hearing from 10 people, that means there's at least 50 other people that haven't mentioned it to me because they don't know or they're too scared to reach out or any sort of reason. They didn't, maybe they haven't even found me yet. But a lot of people are out there suffering. And I want to let you know that you don't have to do it on your own. And there are things we can do. And we don't have to take our own life. There are choices. I know it feels like there aren't. And I know it feels... Like things have just been horrible for so long and everything you try doesn't work. But I'm going to give you a couple tips today and things that you can do to get you out of the darkness. To get you up off the floor, to get you out the front door, to get you interacting back on track. Okay? And I know it's hard. These aren't just like snap your fingers, everything's back to the way it was before we had an eating disorder, before we were self-harming, before we had depression or whatever. I know that it doesn't just happen overnight like that. But we have to take these baby steps in order to reach, you know, to get to the top of the mountain, right? We have to start at the bottom. So we're in this really dark place. Things have been horrible. We, all we can think about is how to get out, how we can stop. And the only thing we think about is suicide. Now, the first thing that I always tell my clients to do, even when I first start really working with them, and I know that they've had suicidal thoughts or maybe have attempted in the past, Begin making a recovery journal. And I know some of you are thinking, Katie, you already told me to do that. And I don't want to, and I don't like it. But it can really help. It's just like the first task in my workbook when we start learning to talk back to our eating disorder. This recovery journal is something that we can go back to. Like re-watching this video when we're feeling down, we can open up that recovery journal and we can read through it. Now the thing about a recovery journal is it's not just like a regular journal. I don't want you to just go to it and vent about whatever's going on. This is only positive, successful, exciting information. Okay? So grab it. Take a little time. Or at least get a piece of paper if you don't have like a blank journal. Because I know many of you have like started journals. You have like two pages filled out. Just tear those pages out. We're starting over. It's our recovery journal. Okay? Go grab it. Now, we're going to hop online. I know you have two screens up, let's open a new tab. We're gonna to go to Google and we're gonna look up motivational and inspirational quotes. Usually I come up with like brainy quote, that's the one that comes to the top, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Click on it and we're gonna scroll through. The ones that really touch your heart, the ones that you think, yeah, that's good, you know? Ooh, I feel it, it's so good. Write it down, write it down in your recovery journal right now. Yep, I know you're looking at it. Yep, that's the one by somebody we may not have heard of, but they're so motivational, right? So you write that down. And I want you to just make a list. Sometimes I'll do for myself just to lift my spirits or I put um, different quotes on my website, I update them. So I do like five at a time, because it kind of gets tiring. I know that none of us like to write anymore, we only like to type, but write these down. Okay, we're gonna turn the page. Second thing I want you to do, I want you to write down and headline this page, reasons for recovery. I know, you're thinking, shut up, Katie. I don't have any reasons. I'm at the end of my rope, remember? I want this all to be over with. There are reasons. Number one, because Katie's here to help and she told me to do this. That's fine, we'll start there. I'll take it, it's okay. At least we have one, right? Okay, so let's brainstorm. Things that we wanna do, right? I'll just talk personally. I wanna own a dog. So bad, I really wanna own a dog. That would be a reason, right? Oh, I want a dog, a cute, fluffy little dog. So, I want to have a pet. That would be a reason. I want to get married. It's another reason. I want to fall in love. I want to have children. I want to watch my sister or my brother have children. I want to graduate. I want to go to college. 
I want to become a therapist and I want to use my experience to help others. I know many of us feel that way. That's a reason for recovery. If nothing else, we have the experience, okay? Enough with the experience. We're ready to move on. We're ready to grow. We're ready to become the women and the men that we're supposed to be, right? So those are just some things we can start thinking about. Goals we have. Those are a great reason to recover, right? Maybe we want to write books one day. We want to have a a blog where we share how we feel. Maybe we want to be a reporter. Maybe we want to be an artist. Maybe we want to be a fashion designer. Whatever we want to do, those are reasons for recovery. Write them down. And it can be silly things like, I really want to recover because I want to eat chocolate cake again. I really want to recover because it doesn't matter. Nothing too small, nothing too large. Write them down. And every, I'll just say, I would say every day, if you were my client, and I was like really sticking it to you. But instead, I'll say once a week, I want you to return to this, and I want you to add at least one thing to the list. Okay? So, we're feeling really bad. We've got our recovery journal. We've written down our quotes. We've written down our reasons for recovery. Okay? You following? If it's too much, take some notes. Write things down. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to reach out. All, I, I know that all of us know when we're at our worst, we've been isolating. We haven't been calling people. We haven't been showing up. We've been standing people up. We've been canceling plans. We've been staying at home, staying in our depression, staying in our eating disorder, self-harming, whatever, right? Reach out to one person. This can be a person that we see every day. It could be a text to a friend. It could be a phone call. It could be an email. It could be a tweet. It can be a message. There are so many things at our fingertips right now. We can message someone on Tumblr. We can, we can be talking to someone halfway across the world, but we can reach out, right? We can get that support. And there are a lot of, even in my followers, hop on my Twitter. I have a lot of girls that are doing some great things, posting videos, writing songs, all sorts of things. Hop on there, get some advice from them. You know, help one another. We are motivational. We are supportive. We are there to help. And that's what I really wanted to create, right? My community of people. We're all here to help. So reach out. Reach out to one person. Even if it's a suicide hotline. I know that every area has a suicide hotline. Call it. Those people are trained to talk to you and to help you. And it's not some, where are you? Who are you? It's not like that. It's like, what made you call in today? What's going on? You know? It's not as scary as a lot of us think. Okay? So reach out. Just to one person. Because you can do it. You're worth recovery. I tell all of you, you can do it. I know it seems exhausting, it's tiresome, but that's what I'm here for, to help support. You are amazing. You have so much strength. You don't even realize how much strength you have. You have so much to give and such a great life to live that we need you to be around. We need you around. We will miss you. People will be sad and it is not okay for you to take your life. You have so much to give. You're worth recovery. It's worth the fight. Trust me, stick with it. It will get easier and I'm here to help. And all the people that follow me that are doing their own supportive videos, we're all here to help. Post on my website, subscribe to my channel, leave comments below. People talk to one another. You're worth it. We love you. We're here to support. So remember that. And write these things down. These are motivational quotes and things that can keep you positive, right? We have to remind ourselves because our eating disorder will try to tear it out. But we're here to help. You're worth it and keep fighting, okay? So get up off the floor, get up off the couch, get out of bed, grab that recovery journal, and let's get working as we work towards a healthy mind and a healthy body.